And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge. This time it is keygenme.py, a reverse engineering challenge. Description, it just gives a link to download. And there are no hints, and people seem to really be struggling. 34% managed to do it successfully, but people really liked it. And I like this as well, so I've already downloaded it. And the reason I like it is because I think it allows me to show you guys two different approaches to solving a challenge, uh, a static and a dynamic, uh, meaning run or just read and kind of figure it out in your head approach. Oh, <laughs> Python, oops, okay. So we get this cute little backstory, which is kind of a distraction. Welcome to the Arcane Calculator. This is a trial version. The full version may be purchased in person, available while supplies last. And we get a bunch of options. We can estimate astral projection, mana burn, whatever that means. And then we've got another thing that's locked. We have the option to enter a license key or to exit. So let's go ahead and let's estimate. And it says, Sol is detected as your nearest star. Which system do you want to travel to? Uh, I don't really know any systems. So uh, Alpha Centauri, maybe. Star not found. And we're given the same options. Let's try option B. You must buy the full version of the software to use the feature. Got option C. Let's try to put in a license key. Please work. Key is not valid. Check your data entry. So let's exit the calculator. And let's take a look at the code that we have. Let's start at the very top and work our way down. So we've got some imports, hashlib, base64, crypto stuff. We have a username, and we saw this before, Shillfield. I guess that's our name. And then we have a key that we see here, key part static. So the, the part that is unchanging is right here. And we have a dynamic portion. This is different than the dynamic and, and static I was talking about, by the way. Um, and then we have a, a static close. So this looks to me like it's gonna change. It's, it's not gonna remain XXX. But let's grab what we have and let's create a file and we'll call it license. And we'll put in what we're finding so far. Perfect. And then as we, as we read down, we see what looks like a, a list of stars. So I guess I was wrong. I didn't capitalize Alpha Centauri, so it didn't work for me. So maybe we'll retry that. Uh, we have a method intro trial, which uh, that was the banner we saw. We have a menu trial, which is our different options. And it seems to take a choice. And then we validate the choice. So right now I'm just reading through the code. I'm not running it, and, and this is static analysis. And we can see we have A through D as potential options. Those are the valid options. And invalid is anything else. OK, fair enough. Based on our choice, then we either estimate the burn, uh, we do this locked estimate, uh, enter license. So I think what we're probably interested in is the entering of the license. That seems to be important. So let's take a look at that. So uh, enter license, we again take input, and we put it into the user key. And then we seem to check it. We have this check key function. And it takes our input, and it also takes this guy that you can see is uh, Showfield as a byte, which if you didn't have a nice IDE, you could scroll up and you could see it right there. So going back to the code we we're interested in, so we're doing check key. We know that's our user input and we know this is Showfield. So the first thing we do is we check the length of the key and we see if it's the same length as our template. And we saw the template, that's what we brought in here. So it needs to be the same length. Next. Uh, if it's not, we return false. So uh, the return of this check key function is, does this key check out? Yes or no. Uh, so if the key was not the same length as the template, we would say, no, this is not a valid key. Then what we do is we start incrementing over the static trial portion. So this is the part that was the beginning before the X's. And so for each character in that, we check the key. So we check key zero and the first portion of the static trial the second, the third, all the way through until we get all the way through this string. If any of those don't match, then we say it's a bad uh, key. And this is just making sure that our key keeps incrementing, that we keep running through what we gave it. Then, it's very nice they gave us a comment here, this is the dynamic part of the key. So the part that is not just hard coded in. And we say if key i equals hash lib SHA-256, so this is a hashing of this guy, which is B show field. And then we're interested in the fourth character. So let's run this in Python just so I can show you how this, oops, down here. Do a clear, make some space, and we'll run in Python just to understand exactly how this um, hashing works. I keep doing that. I keep, sorry about that. So we're going to import hashlib. And I'm just, so I know we need hashlib. And when I look at up above, oops, that wasn't what I wanted. When I look up above, I see we're importing hashlib. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a simple trial here where I'm going to figure out what this code is, and I'm going to run it in a Python shell. So we're going to take hashlib SHA-256. 
we know we need this to be B show fields. I'll grab that in a second. And we want to call hex digest. All right, so let's go get B show field, which we know is near the top. And we'll paste it in. And we'll call this hash. And let's print out what the hash was. And we can see it's, it's a hex hash. And it's a bunch of characters. And when we looked at how we were using it, we seem to just be grabbing characters and comparing. So we're comparing here. We've got the chunk of code we just ran, right? Which you can see highlighted in each spot. And we're taking the fourth element, uh, index four, so actually the fifth element. And we're checking it against the next uh, key portion. And if they don't match, we say the key's invalid. Otherwise, we advance in the key. So we move on to the next key parameter. We look at the fifth and then the third. Okay, cool. So if we wanted to figure out what this is, we might do something like hash. We're trying to figure out what the X's are, that XXX portion, hash four plus hash five plus hash three, six, two. Unfortunately, there's no faster way to do this. At least that I know of. Hash two plus hash seven one eight. One plus hash eight. Awesome. So let's see what that is. That is this string, which let's grab and dump in our license. And let's see if that fits. So I'm going to just copy a new line and I'm going to replace the XXX portion with that and see if it's the right length. And it seems to be. Cool. So let's try rerunning our uh, keygen trial. And let's use option C to enter our license key. And we're going to say it's this guy. And let's see what happens. And you can see uh, exiting trial version, full version written to keygen me. So cool, it, uh, it decrypted it and we're no longer working with the trial version. So this must be our flag. Let's check it out. And uh, I'm probably gonna lose a lot of people now, but I wanna show you a really cool way of doing this that's much easier than what we just did. So rather than going through all this hassle of reading it and trying to understand, let's instead just run this in an IDE. And we know where we're interested. So this is, this is called dynamic analysis and it means running the actual code. So we know here we have the option to make a choice. So let's put a breakpoint right here and we're gonna hit F5 to run it. And we should break at this line uh, once we enter our option. So we're going to enter the license key. And you can see execution is halted here and we can look and we can see the whole state of the system. Over here, we just have a choice. Let's step through. We wanna enter the license. So we're gonna step into that function and now we're gonna be prompted again. So let's step over. Uh, I'm gonna enter something close, but not quite. I'm gonna say that I had just seen that XXX thing at the top. Okay, we strip it and then we're gonna check the key. So the first thing we're gonna check is if these match, the lengths match. So let's go ahead and we'll just check in our interactive session and we see it's false, they don't match. Why is it false? Uh, let's see, that is, that is bizarre. That should be the same size. Hmm, I don't really believe it. Yeah, it, oh, oh, it does not equal. Sorry, I, I had the logic the wrong way. I thought this was supposed to be equals and then we fall in. This is not equal. So uh, length of the key is not equal to length is actually false. They are the same. And so we don't fall into this uh, area of logic, if that makes sense. Okay, and then uh, negation of logic can definitely be confusing. Then we know what we're doing next. It, actually, let's pretend we didn't do the static analysis. So we're looping over this guy. We've got a P and we have key zero, which is also a P. Are these two not equal? No, nope, they seem to be equal. All right, so our key is good so far. We're, we're gonna say, I think this is all gonna check out to this point. Let's run ahead. And now we're on key element 23. And we'd like to check if it's gonna fail at this point. Yes, these are no longer equal. So we need to do something about that. So let's find out what it expects to be the value. Key 23 is supposed to be E. So let's go ahead and let's just set it to that so that we don't fail the check. Oops, we actually, we will have to be a little, little trickier. So we'll have to do something like key. Oh, that's a pain. This is a pain. Hmm, what's the way to do this? 
in Python. Sorry, this is a, a language specific. Ah, perfect. So I just made a list which broke it out on each character. And we're going to say 23 is equal to E. So that's going to update one of the X's. There we go. And now we're going to update key. We're going to make it a string by doing a join of the list V. And now if we look at our key, we actually have E. So I, I know that was a little bit more work than maybe we'd like, but we should pass now when we check this out. Uh, right, right, right. So again, we don't want this to be true. We want it to be false. So we step over it, perfect. Yeah, and then you just, you continue right down the line and uh, you would probably do it all at once. But I just want you to see how you can have this interactive session that you work with. And it's very cool because sometimes you'll have things that are, are far too complex really for you to do in your head or on paper or anything like that. So what you'd much rather do is you just like to look at uh, the, the program in actual execution and it may be doing 30 things. You just find the thing that's relevant to you. So for example, the check key function, you set a breakpoint at the top and then let's set it there. And then you look at what's being passed in. You look at how things are being used and you can change things so that the check key passes. Anyway, I hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please like and subscribe.